Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be using a union-based SQL injection attack to list the database content on Oracle databases. All right, let's get started. This lab contains a SQL injection vulnerability in the product category filter. The results from the query are returned in the application's response, so you can use a union attack to retrieve data from other tables. The application has a login function, and the database contains a table that holds usernames and passwords. You need to determine the name of this table and the columns it contains, then retrieve the contents of the table to obtain the username and password of all users. To solve the lab, log in as the administrator user. All right, so over here, we've got a couple of end goals. The first is that we need to determine which table contains the usernames and passwords. Then we need to determine the column names in that table. And then we use that information in order to output the content of the table, which would be the usernames and passwords of the users of the application, including the administrator user. And then we need to log in as the administrator user. All right, so the nice thing about this exercise is that it doesn't assume that we have any prior knowledge of the name of the table or, for example, the names of the columns in the table like we did in previous labs. Instead, in this lab, we're going to have to figure that out all on our own, just like we would have to in a realistic scenario. Okay, so let's access the lab and create an analysis section over here. All right, so it looks like the same shopping application that we've been dealing with in the past couple of exercises. You can filter on category. So if I filter on gifts over here, it'll only display the items that are related to this category. So the items that are related to gifts. And we saw over here, the category filter is in the URL. To confirm that this is vulnerable to SQL injection, we just add a single quote, which is a character in SQL. And this results in a syntax error in the backend database, which results in an internal server error in the application, which confirms that this is vulnerable to SQL injection. Now, whatever gets entered in the category field is displayed on the page, and that means we could use a union-based SQL injection to display content from other tables, like a table that contains the usernames and passwords of the users of the application. All right, so since we're working with union-based SQL injection, there's a couple of steps that we need to perform. The first one is to determine the number of columns that are being used by the vulnerable query. And we said the way to do that is using the order by clause and iteratively ordering by the number of columns that are being used by the vulnerable query. So we start with one. If we get a 200 response, that means the vulnerable query is using at least one column and then we'll increase it to two and to three and so on until we get an internal server error, meaning that we're trying to order by a column that does not exist. So to do that, I'm going to use burp because it's much easier when it comes to encoding the input. Click start. Okay, let's move that over here for a little bit. Go to proxy, set foxy proxy extension to intercept or to send requests to burp. All right, and now when I load this, it should get intercepted in burp, and it does. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to send this to repeater because I'm going to be sending multiple requests, and I'm going to turn this off. All right, so we could see in the application there has to be at least two columns, one for the name of the item, and then another one for the description of the item. But again, there could be uh, more columns that are not displayed on the page, which is why we have to enter this payload in order to figure out the number of columns. So we could start off with one, although I'm pretty sure that there is at least two. 
but let's do this iteratively. So control U to URL encode it, hit send. And we get a 200 response code. That means there's at least one column and it's ordered by it. Let's do two. And again, control U to URL encode it. Hit send. Okay, we get a 200 response code. That means we have at least two columns. Let's try three. Hit send and we get a 500 internal server error. So let's write that down. And what that means is we're trying to order by a column that does not exist. So the number of columns that the vulnerable query is using is three minus one, which is equal to two. All right, now that we know the number of columns, we need to find out if these columns accept type text. And the reason we do that is because the usernames and passwords that we want to display from the user's table are of type text. And so we need to be able to output them in a column that accepts that type. And so to do that, so let's just say find data type of columns. Okay, so to do that, we use the union select null statement. So I've got two null values over here because I know there's two columns based on step number one. Now, if we go back to the page, we could see the first column contains alphabets and the second column contains alphabets. So I know with about 100% accuracy that this, that both columns accept type text. So instead of doing this iteratively column by column, I'm just going to put type text in both of them. So A and A and see if it gives me a 200 response. And again, control U to URL encode it, hit send, and I get an internal server error. Now that's weird because you could see over here, this accepts type text and this accepts type text. However, remember that in the title of the description, it says that we're dealing with Oracle. And we learned from a previous lab that in Oracle, you need to have the from clause. And so, we're going to use from the dual table, which is a dummy table that can be used. Okay, so let's try that and do control U. And I did that incorrectly. And I'm doing shift to you. Here we go. Control U. Hit send. And we get a 200 OK. And we should see our A characters somewhere in the text. And we see them right over here. All right, so make a note saying first that this is an Oracle database. And both columns accept type text. All right, so the third step usually would be to determine what database we're working with, but just because it gave me an error on this query over here, I knew that it was an Oracle database and it works when it comes to dual, so I no longer have to display the version of the database to see what database we're dealing with. So step number three in this case would be to output the list of tables in the database. And in order to do that, we're going to look at the hint section, which has the SQL injection cheat sheet. And I wanted to open that in a new page. And if we go down, you could see the section database contents tells you how to output the list of tables in the Oracle database and it tells you for other databases. But again, we know that we're working with Oracle, so we're just going to look at this section over here. So you use all tables in order to output all the table names in the database. And we have to make that work with our union based SQL injection. So union select and we need two column names over here. So I don't know the column names 
of this table over here. So I'm going to Google it and say Oracle. Okay, so you could see over here one of the columns is table name, the other column is owner, and so on. I'm only interested in getting the names of the table. So I'm just going to say table name, and then the next column is going to be null. We have to have two columns again because over here we determined that the number of columns is two. And then we comment out the rest of the query. Copy that, go back to burp. Control U to URL encode it. Hit send. And we get a 200 response, which is good. Now, if we go down, we should see the list of tables. So you've got access, that's a table name, alert, and so on. We're looking for something that has the word users in it. So that looks like a built-in table, so that's not what I'm looking for. Same goes with this one. Here we go. So this looks like it's a custom table for the application, so I'm going to assume this is the table we're looking for. And put it over here. Now that we know the table name, we need to know the column names that contain the usernames and passwords of the users of the application. So the next step is to output the column names of the users table and to do that we'll look at the hints section again and this is the way you output the column names from the table so let's copy that again we have to make it fit with our union based sql injections we'll add union select and I need two columns over here so let's say column and null we'll figure out what the column name is in a bit and table name over here so the table that we found and then comment out the rest of the query all right so to figure out the column names that are available in this table again I'm going to google it So we've got owner, table name, column name. Here we go. So that's what I'm interested in. All right, so this should output the column names of the users table. So let's copy that, go to burp. Control U to URL encode it. and hit send again 200 response that's a good sign and if we go down it should display the column names of the columns in that table so you could see there's this one over here there's this one over here and i think that's it so it only actually has two columns so the username one let's copy that and the password column. All right, so now that we know the name of the table and then the names of the columns that contain usernames and passwords, we could output the usernames and passwords of the users of the application. So the next step is to output the list of usernames and passwords. Okay, and to do that, we start off our union based SQL injection, and then we say select the username over here and the password column from the users table, which is this one over here. And then comment out the rest of the query. Let's copy that, put it in burp. Control U to URL encode it. Hit send. 
And again, 200 response, that's a good sign. That means the request worked. And if we go down, you see that it's outputting the usernames and then the passwords. You've got the username for administrator, Carlos, and so on. So I'm going to copy this over here. And remove the extra characters. All right, so let's test this out. So click on my account, copy the username, copy the password, hit login, and here we go. It says congratulations, you've solved the exercise. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we both exploit the vulnerability manually and then script it in Python, check out the video linked on the screen. Also, make sure to hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Thank you and see you in the next video.